So, uh, you're uh, performing puppet shows and you're doing stuff at home, and then finally you go to Sejep. Right, yes. Quebec. Well, what is Sejep for stuff? Sejep is um, is a wonderful thing that Quebec has. So you go to grades uh, to high school till grade eleven, and then everybody gets free two years in a college like environment, and you can take all the courses or half courses. You can take a number of things, and I still didn't know many young people go through this. You know, I'm going to be an actor. Like, how can I tell anyone that? What do I do about that? Mm -hmm. And so I took a double of history and theater and ended up in, um, in an incredible class at Dawson College. It just, you know, I, I was lucky and there were really good teachers there. And there was also really good history teachers. And mm -hmm. I, I remember he, I wrote something and the history teacher said, you know, actually you could publish this. And I went, I want to be an actor. And I remember him looking at me like, are you out of your mind? You could get something published at like 18. No interest. Hmm. No interest at the act. He said, we'll have to do some work on it. Mm -hmm. And it was about something which is a, you know, a theme in many things. It was about um, Grimm's fairy tales. Mm -hmm. And so I was always interested in that world. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it was a, it was a it encouraged me because there were other people in that class who were going to do it and who were auditioning for theater schools, mm -hmm. and it made me audition for National Theater School mm -hmm. without kind of telling my parents because it was wild the idea that you would get in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still like that. Mm -hmm. And out of that environment, we did a show out of a, a children's book that I had, The Happy Prince. We plagiarized horribly and did this beautiful children's show, and mm -hmm. so I was still. Without realizing it, I did want to initiate projects. Mm. But to me, that was being an actor. That wasn't being anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I auditioned for National Theatre School and got in. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell my parents. I was the first person on either side of my family to go to college or university. Oh, really? Nobody, no, I was like out there in the wild yonder mm. of education mm -hmm. by simply going to CGEP. Everyone else had um, gone to um, trade school. So it was, it was a big deal. It was a big, big deal to sit down with my working class father and my, and my mom too mm -hmm. and say, not only do I want post, post education, mm -hmm. but it's a theater school. And I tried to tell them what an incredible thing it was to be accepted, but they had no mm -hmm. knowledge of it. There was absolutely no cultural basis in that world. And so I, I got the 500 bucks and I worked in a theater company over the summer. And then that year, uh, I went to theater school and at the end of that year, I got kicked out. Or as they say, not asked back. Mm -hmm. And I was so out of it. I was really in a dream world. I was very dreamy and very floaty without a lot of grounding. And I didn't understand theater school. I didn't understand why they were trying to kill me. Mm -hmm with the sort of boot camp thing, mm -hmm. it felt violent to me. The, 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 the physical aspects of, of the theater school felt, felt violent to me. They threw you in the first thing in the morning with this strength and stretch class, and then you went to judo and karate, and then you did a voice class which was running around and more physical movement. Mm -hmm. Then you had physical movement in the afternoon, and I was one of the weaker people. And I just, I didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. No one told me why, and no one grabbed my mind mm -hmm. with a vision of what this was about. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought it was awful. And I didn't understand that I wasn't doing well. I didn't understand that I kind of disappeared. Mm -hmm. And I got sort of thinner and thinner. <laughs> they used to call me licorice, I think, because I only had one leotard and tights. Right? Everyone else had different colors and stuff like that. But I had like, no money except for my tuition from mm -hmm. my parents. So, and I, I don't think I realized that skipping class was actually a bad thing and somebody was going to mention it to me at some point, that skipping judo and karate was not a good idea. And gradually toward the end of the year, there are these rumors that some people aren't asked back. And all of a sudden I thought, really? Like, is that, you know? And I went in for that meeting and they mm -hmm. said we're not asking you back next year and all of a sudden it was like oh fuck I am dead hmm. like I, I, I just didn't understand that that was possible not only mm -hmm. did I have to go and tell 
my parents that I'd gotten kicked out of theater school, but I had to figure out what I was going to do. Mm. It was horrible. It was really, and I remember kindly the voice teacher saying, well, the good thing about acting is that you can pick it up at any age. <laughs> it was like, oh, what? When I'm old, I'm going to all of a sudden act? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? It was like I was both insulted and just devastated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a lot of close friends in the theater school because I was living with like a, a guy who was in science and he thought I undermined everything that I did because he thought it was beneath me to act or God knows what was going on. But there, mm -hmm. was, there was shit going on that was about me being out in a territory with no support, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was devastating. And so I quickly got together my backup plan, which was to take a one-year teacher's college thing and with that, as well as the two years of CJEP, you could teach grade school. Mm -hmm. Why I thought I would be good with kids, I don't know, but it was a thing women did. Women are always good with kids, right? We're mm -hmm. born like that. So I, um, you know, it was just what you did. And then you taught grade school. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to teacher's college, and that was really miserable. Mm -hmm. I felt shamed. Totally. I was in a state of shame. I wasn't good. I'd gotten kicked out and I was still living with a boyfriend and I was trying to do papier-mâché puppet heads and I didn't have a lot of craft, you know? I've never been crafty. And I would go and teach and in such a state of misery, we'd have, you know, trial teaching. And I didn't, you know, I, I just wanted to talk to the kids who wanted to, were into what I was doing. I didn't want to discipline. I didn't want to... Mm. And every once in a while, the kids would clap. It's very odd, this thing. Like I would read a story, and the kids didn't usually clap at the end of a story, and they would clap. And I'd think, that's odd. Mm -hmm. One time I drew something, and I can't draw, and showed it to them, and they clapped. It was a very odd thing. And then I got like a C plus on my, and, and I actually went to a couple of, of interviews to teach in the suburbs. It was like, you know, not to be a snob. <laughs> but okay. it, it was just death to me. It was like death, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this is my, right? Can we get that on the camera? Can we get this? Okay, good. So, um, mm -hmm. and thank God no one took me. Like I didn't get a job. Mm -hmm. I didn't try very hard. Mm -hmm. I was just like numb with misery. Right. And then there was this sort of, I don't even know if apocryphal is the right word for it, but anyway, I had to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And I had this red velvet cape I used to wear. It was a very cape time in Montreal, anyway. And it, it was, was raining. And I remember I, I walked what must have been the length of Celeron. Mm trying to decide what to do. And I just got wetter and wetter and the dye, and I was soaking wet. And I walked and I walked until my feet felt like stubs, my legs felt like stubs. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I decided that I had to act, no matter how bad I was. And I had an image of White Horse. I'd heard there was some kind of can-can thing, frontier girl thing there. And I had an idea, I would go anywhere that I could go and I would work at the local diner mm -hmm. and make whatever money that there was so I could act. And that was the decision. Mm -hmm. And I would do that. And I didn't care if anyone thought I was good. I mm -hmm. didn't care if I was good. I didn't mm -hmm. care if I ever made any money at it, but I had to do this thing. And a week later, I had an audition for a children's theater group, mm -hmm. and I didn't stop working until now. 